Okay, let's go through this problem really quick. I believe this is the problem you're asking a question about. I'm just going to go through every step of it so everybody knows what we're doing. Um, uh, on this problem, it, the main goal is to see if you know how the uh, balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement work together. Uh, what we do is we take uh, the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement, and then we've removed a couple of items here to see if you know how things track back. Uh, I've started in the order that it usually should be done to uh, complete this and the easiest path for getting it done. Uh, if you don't start with A and you start with some of these other ones, it'll be a little bit harder. Uh, so the way you get A, uh, total assets, is from using the equation that we've written on the board, I think, every single class. Assets equals uh, liabilities plus owner's equity. All right? Uh, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. All right? So uh, when you have that, uh, you take essentially the liabilities here, owner's equity here, you add these two, and it'll get you A. So now that you have total assets, so and that's what I do right down here. So we take... Uh, owner's equity plus assets, owner's equity plus, a uh, owner's equity plus liabilities, I'm sorry, owner's equity plus liabilities equals total assets. So we got our liabilities number here, equity. All right, great. Once we have this, it's simple algebra to figure out B. We have total assets, we subtract these three numbers to get to B. Uh, the 53,000 number, 3,000 number, then the 258. Well, this is the number we just solved. So for B, we use that number and then we subtract out the 258, the 3,000, the 53,000, and then this is the number we get for the cash. So now we have pretty much everything in this column, which is really great because then we have to solve for the next column. So we have A and B, we need to solve for C. Well, if we've done B right, what we have is the beginning cash at the beginning of the year of 2005, and this is the ending cash at the end of the year. So to get to the end of the year from the beginning, what we need is the change in cash, the total delta in cash for the year. Well, the way we get there is this is the cash from the year that come from operations, investing, and financing. If we take, uh, we have positive cash flows here, and then negative cash flows represented by these brackets right here. Uh, we take the positive cash flow minus the, uh, you know, and we net out the two negatives here, and we add that to the the beginning cash flow, and so that will get us. This is where we get our delta of cash, and then this is the beginning cash, and you add those two together, you get uh, cash for the end of the year of the second year. So this is the cash number we just calculated from the beginning of the year. Then this is the cash from operations, and then we subtract out the cash from uh, financing and investing, and it gets us uh, the total, uh, because we had the cash from the beginning of the year, it gives us the total for uh, our cash balance uh, at the end of the year. These three numbers give us the change in cash. Uh, for the year. When we add the beginning balance, it gives us the total that we'll have at the end. Okay, great. Uh, now that we've done E, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, C, now that we've uh, solved for C, we then need to solve for D. D is the retained earnings. So what are the earnings retained in the business? And we get that in a similar way that we do cash. We get uh, whatever our beginning retained earning balance is, and then what is the change in retained earnings? And I've talked about this many times in class. You take net income minus dividends. Well, there's no dividends listed, right? Dividends are listed in the notes. So in the first note, it says the only financing activity and statement of cash flows for both years relates to cash payments of dividends. Boom! That's our dividend. So we get that from the footnote right there, and that footnote lets us know, okay, we paid 2,000 in dividends. So we had net income of 5,250. We paid 2,000 in dividends. And so our retained earnings from 2005 will be 3,250. We add that to the beginning balance of 2,000 for uh, 442, and we'll get our total. So retained earnings is 2,442 is the beginning balance. This is our net income. This is our dividend amount. This is the dividends that we less net net the dividends, and so the total amount right there in retained earnings is five thousand six nine two. Five thousand six nine two. So five thousand six nine two is what we get in our uh, retained earnings, uh, and then uh, so we have D. The final thing is figuring out property, plant, and equipment. So that's E. And you'll notice I left out inventory. And the reason why is I didn't want you to just algebraically get there. I wanted to see if you knew 
property, plant, and equipment is net of depreciation. And so to get to our ending balance of property, plant, and equipment, we not only have to add our investing activities, but also the accumulated the depreciation expense for the year. So this is our net PP&E. So that's totally proper pro, total property, plant, and equipment net depreciation and amortization. The cash uh, or the cash from investing uh, this 3,500. The footnote says the investing activity relates to the purchase of additional equipment and cash. No other equipment was purchased. I probably should have put no other equi equipment was purchased or sold. Don't worry, the exam has purchased or sold in it uh, as far as uh, it clarifying it. And then uh, the depreciation expense amounts to this. So if we take this amount as the amount we invested and add it because we're adding it to our assets. Yes, it's a cash outflow, but unlike dividends, it's a cash outflow that builds this account. We're buying equipment. So we need to add 3,500 to this amount and then subtract out this, uh, this depreciation amount, uh, which is the, which is the, the amount that uh, we depreciated in the year that we had in depreciation. And uh, sometimes it doesn't show up in the income statement right here. Sometimes you have to get it in the footnote. And this is an example of it being in the footnote. So we have the beginning property plan equipment plus purchases minus look at that uh, accumulated depreciation gets us to PP&E. So that's how you figure that out and that's how you map that out. You you could if you wanted to fill out all the NAs uh, that are here and uh, and and you know if you wanted to be really diligent, but you don't get any extra points for that. You get some style points that are fun, but uh, that's that. Uh, let me know if you have other questions.